If you go to the streets of Kenyans today and pick 10 Kenyans randomly, just say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just put them somewhere, 10 of them, and ask them, right now as you speak, with respect to where the Kenyans' economy is, do you manage to save? And if you do, what percentage do you save out of that total amount of money that you earn each and every month? This is the shocking numbers that you'll get. Over 75% do not save or do not have savings meaning seven of them out of ten do not have any savings you know why they will ask you a very simple question you are hardly asking you are asking questions about if we are saving and we are hardly surviving we are trying as much as we can to make sure that we eat drink or rather should i say food shelter and clothing there's so much of the very basic things in kenya and you're talking about savings, probably these guys can be very, very, very much emotional to the situation. Guess what? Right now, as we speak, most of the Kenyans are actually so much pressed based on the status of the economy in our country. And guess what? This is not only a situation in Kenya. It is happening globally. If you ask any question out there, if you go to Uganda, if you go to Europe, you go to the Americas, Southerns, the Asians, the Australians, and whatever, people are complaining that the economies are actually hurting. And I think the effects of the COVID-19 are still here to stay with us. I think, I think it's going to take a lot of time before we recover fully and go back to where we were before. But anyway, this is the point. Majority of Kenyans right now, as you speak, they are unable to save because they are actually hardly surviving. So what exactly is happening? This is what is happening. Right now, as you speak in Kenya, the dollar is actually hitting a close to 150 Kenyan shillings. If you go to a bank, you wanna buy a dollar, that's the amount of money that you'll get. But if you're exchanging to the same, same bank, probably they give you a rate of 146, 147, around there. So the question is this, and this is what I want to explain to you guys, uh, my fellow Kenyans, so that you understand. What's happening is that when you have a lot of you know, you, you require a lot of shillings to buy a single dollar and you need the dollars to buy the raw materials to manufacture things like the cooking oil, you manufacture things like the, uh, the, the wheat from outside the country to, manufacture, to buy things like the fuel. Right now, as we speak, the fuel is you know, retailing at 211 Kenyan shillings, the highest that has ever recorded. Then that means there is a trickle-down effect. It means that that guy individual who is importing the raw, uh, raw materials to manufacture the cooking oil has to increase the price to capture that difference. The person who is actually importing the, 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 the oil, also they have to make sure that they factor in that. Well, although I heard that Kenya is now buying the you know, fuel from, or should I say the crude oil, or whichever the kind of oil they buy from the Saudi Arabia using the Kenyan shillings, I do not know how effective it is until to date. We've never gotten any, any, any report on that. The point is this, that increment of price is actually trickling down. And I guess here in Kenya again we have something different. There is an increment of taxes from light, you know, from right to left. So all that factors, if you put them in one basket, is actually explaining the reason as to why Kenyans pockets are actually pressed. And guess what? Out of all those happenings, one thing is remaining constant. The amount of money that you're getting at the end of the month. Probably what you were getting way before COVID-19 is still the same. Some actually have cut that amount of money that you get at the end of the month. I know of an individual who was earning close to 65000 at the end of the month uh, before the COVID-19. When the COVID came, well, he was fired. And uh, when the COVID kind of does, he was again hired. And now the amount of money that he is getting, it's 45000 Kenyan shillings, meaning 20 Gs are gone. This guy needs to sustain the life that he was living. What does it mean? Well, obviously, as a wise person, you need to cut down your expenses to actually accommodate that amount of money. And that means meaning that you have to, you know, get your kid from the school that you are paying before, get them a quite an affordable one, of which is not your will. I understand it's against the will of any given parent out there because they wish to give their kid children the best and the quality life out there. Also, where you live, what you pay as your rent, how much you consume as food and what have you, that is what actually people are doing to make sure that they survive in these economies. Now, the point is this. I was identifying the statistics that are quite horrible that are out there. Over 75% of Kenyans are not savings. And you know what? You might say it's not my problem. Okay, I understand. Kenya is a capitalist country. But the point is this. If all those individual unit families are not saving, it means even the, the country itself, it's actually on rumbles. And by the way, there was some things that we were saying, hey, Kenya is heading on the, there are people who actually subscribe to the understanding that Kenya is heading the Ghana way because I know Ghana, they declared bankrupt. They cannot be able to pay the, the loans and the debts and what have you. So there are some people who are arguing that Kenya is heading on that, that direction. That's why we are really pressed to actually pay more taxes. Each and every time, all those guys who are employed, each and every time there is a tax increment, tax increment, 
Well, I know somebody by the name Mark Twain said that he, any nation try to tax itself to the wealth. It's like get yourself into a bucket, bu bucket and trying to lift it up. So anyway, the point is this. Now, how do you actually go ahead and be able to be able to survive? What are kind of the remedies to actually survive in this kind of an economy? The point is this. Whenever you realize there is an increment of something, meaning you need to adjust yourself. Remember one thing. The fuel has increased, the cooking oil, the whatever, everything is rising. But their salary is remaining constant. So if you keep on maintaining the same, same standard of living without you adjusting yourself to at least accommodate the difference, then you're going to feel the effect. Let's say, for example, you used to buy, let's say, two liters of cooking oil. Goes for two weeks. How about if you find a way on how you can be able, because you cannot find a way of how you can reduce the price. You do not have that effect. That is out of your control. So and we say you control the controllables. If you can make sure that that cooking oil at least got for two weeks and two days, it means that you've salvaged the two days. If you do so in a period of, let's say, a month or say an year, actually you realize that, hey, you can be able to factor in the factor of inflation. Right now, as we speak, the inflation is close to 7%. Thank God, actually it's going down. It was the way from 96 that's quite an amazing thing. But again, I don't think we should even have a, you know, an inflation of whichever the percentage. But anyway, when we have it at 2 point something percent to at least 3 or 4, at least it's quite arguable. But again, at the end of the day, why should you even have it? Okay? Now, the point is this. If you can actually go ahead and adjust yourself, whatever there is adjustment in terms of the inflation, also adjust yourself. And I always tell people this. Yeah. And I'm going to use a very simple language for you to understand. To understand, If there is an inflation of 6.5%, also adjust your life by 6.5%. What does it mean? Look around and ask yourself, what are the areas where you can be able to cut? Is it the credit? Is this the calling? Is this the, you know, the minutes? Is this the internet? Is this whatever? Make sure that at least you look all those areas whereby you can actually adjust yourself by that rate of 7.7% or 6. Point, whichever the inflation rate it is right now. And also when it comes to rent and what have you. Because if you do not adjust yourself, yourself by that. You see, what we do is that we sit, you see, the government is usually on the other side and we are on this side. So we blame the government and tell them, hey, do something about this. Do something about this inflation rate and what have you. All right. I know the government has the capability to do that, but sometimes we might find they may not have the right tools or the right skills to do that because at the end of the day, it tricks down to you selecting the wrong leader and what have you. And then you complain and such kind of a thing. So it becomes to a point whereby if we can actually start by ah, or we being responsible to our life. Yes, you're getting 15,000 at the end of the month. Yes, you're getting 20,000 at the end of the month. Now, what have you done as a citizen? What have you done as an individual? What at, at an individualistic level, what exactly are you doing? Are you considering maybe looking forward into having another stream of income? Say you're getting like 20,000, all right? So if you're getting 20,000, if you can manage to salvage only 2K, 2K in a period of, may say, uh, five months, you have like 10K. 10K is enough, maybe say you're married, you have a partner. Say you can say, hey, guess what? Hey, partner, we can be able to start something, even if it means you selling vegetables out there. Then you maybe be to rake in like 200 Kenyan shillings a day. All right, meaning that you have another 6,000 at the end of the month. Now that house has 26,000 at the end of the month. So if you guys, you are saving at least, you know, 2,000 at the end of the month, you can manage to save at least 2,500 or 3,000. Therefore, if it took you six months to acquire 10K, obviously to take you less of that. And therefore you can actually pump in more money to the existing business or change it overly. That is exactly how you grow yourself. Did I promise it's easy? No, it's not easy. If it is, then everyone will be doing exactly that. Does it? So sometimes you can actually go out there and look around and see what the areas you can be able to solve. And this is how you can make a decision. Some of the good businesses you can start as of now. Though I'll make a whole video explaining the best businesses as of today, based on the inflation and what have you. But the point is this. Whenever the cost of living is actually going up, what happens is that a lot of people tend to cut, I know, the expenditure on some areas. Let me just explain some things for you to understand. What happens is, is that whenever you realize that there is no money flowing in, it means that people actually are incorporating what we call the marginal propensity to save. See, when you have small, you tend to incorporate that marginal propensity to save. You don't want to use more of your money. You save it because you anticipate maybe, if you have the capability to save again, if you anticipate maybe probably things can go dicey or things can go be a little bit slippery. So what you do is this. You find right now, people, most of the people are not concentrating on building. They are who are concentrating fully on building. Others are actually not concentrating on it. Why? Whatever the cost of living goes, up now the focus focus now the focus is shift towards three things the shelter the clothing and the food 
So at that particular point, if you can get yourself into investment in these areas where majority are going, because at the end of the day, business numbers matters a lot. So if you can invest on the food, if you can invest on shelter, food how? You can start any business related to food, all right? You can get something out of that because most of the people are spending their money towards food. If you can get yourself into the shelter, meaning if you can get yourself into the real estate, and this is where you find the rich become richer. Why? Because whenever all this banking, this majority of the people are the middle here, they have the power to purchase some assets. Obviously, the asset rises in price. And if the asset rises in price, well, not majority of the people buy. You see, rich do not buy when there is demand. They usually buy when there is no demand, when the demand goes low. So when there is no demand, meaning people are focusing on food, shirt, and clothing, therefore, this is the time now the rich actually buy the assets. That's why we say the gap keep on growing bigger and bigger. All right. For example, there are some news we may say, hey, the shares and the stocks are actually going down. They are not diving. Now, that's the time that, they, 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 you know, what do we call them? These people who are not really entrepreneurs withdraw and say, hey, I'm not going to get my money back. I don't want to lose. That's the time they reach their thinking on entrepreneurs. This is the best time to get into the business because they know this thing will revamp, go back to the uptrend, and then we get the bull, and then we get money out of that. So the point is this. At the end of the day, Kenyans are in savings. So what do you do? Just like I've said, Look at the areas where you can actually adjust yourself, get something out of it, and be able to save at least even if it's two shillings, right? Out of the 10 shillings that you get at the end of the day. Make sure that at least you salvage and put aside two shillings. That is the only way. And the only way you can be able to do that, two ways, I've explained this before. Number one is either you increase the number of money or the rather the income that you get at the end of the day, month, or week, whichever the time you get paid. Or you actually will live below your means. If you're getting 20 Js at the end of the month, how about you live a 18,000 kind of a lifestyle? So you save the difference. If you save the difference or the purposes of investing, then you create another stream of income. Now you get more than 20,000 at the end of the month. And then from there, that is the only way you actually move ahead and actually get yourself into, out of this problem. Because, hey, guess what? This thing is actually resulting to people having depressions, having some uh, what things we call like, um, you know, some of the weird things that you're hearing here and there. So it is good to make sure that, hey, understand this. You're not alone on this journey. You're not alone on this journey. Over 75% of Kenyans are actually facing this challenge. But again, don't feel comfortable and say, hey, uh, in Swahili we say kifo chawengi ni arusi, meaning like uh, when all of us are actually suffering, then it means if it is common, uh, then it's not, I have no problem with that. Never say that. The point is this. When people are complaining as a smart person, just look around and see the areas that you can be able to fill and make money at the end of the day. That is exactly how to go about it. It's as simple as that, and that marks the end of my video. But guess what? Doesn't mean it is the end of me posting each and every day. Each and every day, I give you a green content. I give you green information out here. All what you need to do so that you don't miss any of it in future. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free of charge. It's fast. Only take one second. Down below there on your right, there is a small button written, subscribe. It is in black. Hit that magical button. Turn that notification bell. You can as well join this channel and become a member of this specific channel. And by the way, by only doing that, you get to be notified whenever I upload a new good video. You can as well grab my number from the description of this specific video. Give me a call. I offer services pertaining to investment, businesses, and all those kind of things, and financial consultancy as well for just a cup of coffee. If you would like as well to grab my booklets, they are ready for you, ready to pick. For now, it's a goodbye. Don't forget. Let's see you in the next one.